नमस्कार माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे इन द क्विक रिव्यू सेक्शन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग स्टेप बाय स्टेप प्रोसीजर ऑफ द टूथ प्रिपरेशन फॉर ऑल सेरामिक क्राउन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग फॉर बोथ इंटीरियर एंड पोस्टीरियर टीथ यू नो दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक बोथ अकेडमिकली एज वेल एज क्लिनिकली इट इज वन ऑफ द प्रैक्टिकल एक्सरसाइज एट द ग्रेजुएट एज वेल एज इन द पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट लेवल and second it is very important in our clinics also to understand the step by step procedure to do the tooth preparation so let's begin before proceeding to the tooth preparation let us quickly revise what is an artificial crown it is the artificial replacement that replaces the morphology function and contour of the missing tooth structure okay now this can be of two types the depending on the coverage it can be a partial veneer crown or it can be a full veneer crown the partial veneer crown is when the restoration it covers two or more surfaces of the tooth partially okay now depending on the coverage it can be a 3/4 crown or a 7/8 crown the full veneer crown it covers all, all of the clinical crown so that will be a full veneer crown and the full veneer crown depending on the material that we are using it can be a complete cast crown that is the metal that we are using cast metal the metal ceramic crown or the porcelain fused to metal crown and third is the all ceramic crown so coming to the full veneer crowns these are the crowns in which the crown it covers all the axial walls and the occlusal surface of the teeth depending on the material as we just discussed they can be complete cast crown made up of the cast metal noble alloys base metal alloys are all used to make the crown they are mainly given in the posterior region second are the metal ceramic crown in this the substructure or the base is made up of the cast metal which is veneered with a layer of fused porcelain which mimics the appearance of the natural tooth these are one of the most widely used fixed restorations in dental practice third are the all ceramic crown they are also the full veneer crown in which the crown is made up of different type of ceramics so in this video we will be discussing the tooth preparation for the all ceramic crown uh, in the interior as well as in the posterior teeth indications for the all ceramic crown the first indication is the high aesthetic requirement whenever the teeth in the aesthetic zone are discolored decayed or fractured we opt for all ceramic crown because they give very good aesthetics second considerable proximal caries if it is present and they cannot be restored by the composite restorations third the incisal edge should be reasonably intact it should support the crown to give structural durability then the endodontically treated teeth if the remaining tooth structure is very less and we are planning for post core we can go for fiber post followed by the all ceramic crown in the aesthetic zone last and very important there should be a favorable distribution of the occlusal load there should be no signs of parafunctional movements like bruxism and the centric contacts should be supported by the tooth structure contraindications for the all ceramic crown first is when more conservative restoration can be planned like the composite restorations then we avoid giving the crowns or the all ceramic crown second thin teeth the teeth which are thin facially there is not enough tooth structure to support the crown there we avoid the all ceramic crown third is deep bite traumatic bite okay next is short clinical crown where we can just observe that it will not offer uh, minimal retention after the preparation there we have to choose for the other treatment options and last and very important as we just discussed that any kind of para functional for example heavy bruxism in these cases the all ceramic crowns should be avoided advantages of all ceramic crowns first is that it gives excellent aesthetics all ceramic crowns they have high translucency and they do not have a dark margin as the porcelain fused to metal crown second they have good strength and durability 
you know with the newer technology and newer materials for example zirconium it offers greater strength than the metal porcelain crowns and they can be successfully used in posteriors also then they have good tissue response even for the subgingival margin these crowns are bonded to the tooth structure so there will be lower risk of infection they are slightly more conservative especially if we talk about the facial wall than the metal ceramic crowns last but very important no allergic reactions because there is no metal so no allergy and if we talk about the disadvantages of the all ceramic crown first is that the proper preparation should be done by the expert second is with the quality comes the cost so all ceramic crown it is a more expensive crown option as compared to the porcelain fused to metal crowns third they may cause wear and tear of the opposing teeth before the preparation is begin we can start with a putty index what is this putty index it is a depth reduction reference index it provides an accurate reference for the facial and the lingual reduction how it is made you know uh, the c silicon the condensation silicon putty form can be used to make this index it is adapted onto the facial and the lingual surfaces of the tooth okay then a separate facial index and the lingual index can be made or an index which extends from the gingival facial to the gingival lingual aspect can also be made along the midline of the preparation as we can see in the picture and similarly it can be done for the posterior teeth also now let us discuss the tooth preparation for the all ceramic crown the step by step procedure for the interior crowns interior all ceramic crowns the tooth preparation the step number 1 is depth orientation grooves the depth orientation grooves are given by the flat and tapered diamond they are given on the two planes of the facial surface the gingival part and the incisal half on the gingival part three grooves can be made and then two grooves can be made on the incisal half the diamond should be uh, inserted to the full depth of the diameter or slightly deeper and the tip of the diamond should be slightly supra gingival in the gingival half okay as we can see in the picture step number 2 is the incisal reduction for this also we will need a flat and tapered diamond point we will first give the incisal orientation grooves about 2 mm deep then the incisal reduction will be done to the depth of the orientation grooves this much incisal reduction is required for the adequate aesthetic results okay now if we talk about the a uh, plane of incisal reduction it should be parallel to the former incisal edge or it should produce near 45 degree inciso lingual bevel next is the facial reduction that is the step number 3 for this we will be using the same diamond point flat and taper diamond point the facial reduction will be done in two planes the uh, incisal segment and the gingival segment first of all the incisal half of the facial surface is reduced it should be reduced so that it permits enough porcelain for the aesthetic satisfactory result then the uh, we will reduce the gingival segment of the facial surface this part should be reduced with a minimum amount of taper first of all second uh, it should produce a depth of around 1 mm and then the shoulder should be prepared with this process when we are reducing the gingival part of the facial surface extend the facial reduction through the proximal surfaces and then we start with the step number 4 that is the lingual reduction lingual reduction is again done in two halves first is we use small round wheel diamond point to create the concave surface the lingual reduction will be approximately 0.5 to 1 mm at least 0.7 mm clearance should be present with the opposing tooth 
okay second we will be doing the lingual axial reduction with the help of flat and diamond point in this we will be forming the finish line that is the shoulder will be extended onto the lingual surface there will be minimum taper and to a depth of around 1 mm once we are done with the reduction we will go for the finishing that is the step number 5 we will finish our tooth preparation two carbide birds will be used first is for the axial finishing we will be using number 171 bar carbide bar and for the shoulder finishing we will be using 957 bar that is the end cutting finishing bar for finishing the shoulder margin then we can use the horizontal facial index to check the amount of the facial reduction that we have done or we can use the mid sagittal in index to check the overall reduction now let us understand the features of the tooth preparation that should be present because each feature it serves its own function first if we talk about the axial reduction it gives the retention and the resistance form along with that the structural durability so enough reduction should be done with minimal taper rounded angles it gives the structural durability then the concave cingulum reduction it also gives the structural durability vertical lingual wall it should be prepared with minimal taper it will give the retention and the resistance form then the shoulder margin which we give throughout in the all ceramic crown it gives the marginal integrity and the structural durability Next, we come to the tooth preparation of all ceramic crown, the step-by-step -step procedure for the posterior crowns. For the tooth preparation of posterior all ceramic crown, the step number one is depth orientation grooves. You know, these grooves help us to do the uniform occlusal reduction. For this, we will be using large round and taper diamond points. We will give one group on each triangular ridge and one in each major group. The depth of the groups will be around 1.5 to 2 mm. Step number two is the occlusal reduction. The occlusal reduction is done with the same diamond point that is large round and taper diamond point. The overall reduction, the final occlusal reduction should be 1.5 to 2 mm deep okay and the, it should follow the geometrical inclines of the occlusal surface so it will be just simulate the occlusal anatomy once we are done with the occlusal reduction we will give a functional cusp bevel this bevel is given with a large round and taper diamond point okay on the mandibular teeth it is given on the facial inclines of the facial cusp and on the maxillary teeth it is given on the palatal inclines of the palatal cusp that is the functional or the supporting cusps okay then uh, the functional cusp bevel it should be parallel to the inclines of the cusp of the opposing teeth okay now this will be followed by the axial reduction that is the step number three facial and the lingual reduction it will be done by the large round and taper diamond point Around 1.5 mm of reduction should be done in the mid crown and 1 mm thickness at the finish line area. Now coming to the finish line, a shoulder with a rounded internal line angle should be produced and this can be produced with a large round and taper diamond point. Next, we come to the step number four, that is the proximal reduction. A short needle diamond point is used to approach the contact area. Avoid touching the adjacent tooth. We can also use matrix band if required. Then uh, it will be followed by the round and tapered point to prepare the finish line, that is the shoulder finish line in the proximal areas. Once we are done with the reduction, we will proceed for the step number five, that is the finishing of the tooth preparation. For this, we can use round and tapered carbide bar for finishing the axial preparation or and large torpedo bar, that is H282 or 016 or 1157 L bar for uh, finishing the shoulder area. Okay, then we can use the horizontal index to check the axial reduction of the preparation 
or we can use the mid sagittal index to check the overall preparation as we can see in the pictures now let us discuss the features of the tooth preparation for the posterior teeth uh, first is the shoulder finish line that we are giving all through it will give the marginal integrity then the axial reduction it gives the retention and the resistance form it should be prepared with a minimal taper the rounded angles that we are giving with the finishing bar it gives the structural durability then the planar occlusal reduction that follows the occlusal anatomy it will give the structural durability functional cusp bevel as we just discussed we will be giving on the functional cusps it gives the structural durability to the preparation so that's all for this topic my dear students i'm sure now you will be able to do the tooth preparation for all ceramic crown and you would also be able to evaluate your preparation okay please subscribe the channel if you are new to it do not forget to share and like the video with your friends and your juniors give your topics in the comment section i will try to make the videos on your given topics wish you success today and always